Hi, welcome to Conquering Clutter's YouTube channel. I'm Bob, and this video is on home office basics. And the reason Conquering Clutter chose to do this video is because of the pandemic, and there's more people working at home now than ever. And so it's helpful to know how to lay out your home office so before you do get somebody in, you can sit down and think about your layout first because this is definitely a personal item in your home. This is based around your needs um, for you to accomplish your work and be comfortable during the day and be organized. That, that's what makes you more productive. And if you have things all over the place and you didn't lay it out properly, it can be very frustrating and why you did some things uh, that you did. And so it's great to know these things, okay? So let's start out by doing some basic cabinet widths for required items. So let's start with letter files, okay? So a letter file cabinet is usually 28 and a half tall plus an inch and a half countertop. That gets you 30 inches in height. A 30 inch height is your countertop height for being able to work comfortably. Your chairs are all designed for that you want to sit there and be comfortable when you're working on your laptop and that's so always just remember that height of 30 inches for your base and for your desk area. So a letter file is pretty common. We all use these. The uh, overall dimension of this cabinet is 17 and a half and 16 inches on the inside. So use 17 and a half when you're laying out, but know that the inside of it is 16 inches so you can get the proper file hangers that are needed in this uh, particular cabinet. So this is a, a letter, okay? Legal is an 18 inch and 19 and a half. So it's 18 wide, 19 and a half overall. So remember that, and that is for a legal. So legal file. Now, there are some tricks that you can do. So say you're sitting at your desk and you want to pull the file out, but you don't want to have the files facing this way as you pull that drawer out, and you want to turn them this way, then you would go to a 24 inch, which is a 25 and a half inch cabinet, and then you could put them going this way. And that could help you you know, if you don't like getting around to the front or you just open a drawer up slowly like I do and then I can view everything I can as it opens up, okay? So, letter legal is probably the most used files um, or used cabinets that we build for an office system. So all the others are kind of dedicated to some storage, some pull-out printers and things like that. So, some key things to remember, 30-inch counter hop, countertop height 16 or 17 and a half for letter 19 and a half or 18 inside for legal okay so remember those so when you're laying out your cabinetry you'll want to have these close to you now there's one other thing though that you can always you know always do too is to have one on the left and one on the right you could add the double one on the left and on the right you could do a utility drawer where these are six and a quarter tall each and in the last one's 12 and a half. That's the height of this cabinet to get you to the 28 and a half and then you usually have a toe kick on the bottom so the drawer isn't completely on the carpeting or flooring. So remember this, so 28 and a half, six and a quarter, six and a quarter, 12 and a half, or two 12 and a halves if you wanna do double up with just files. Okay, so with that being said, now that you kinda of know the, the file system sizes, Here's a typical desk layout. Got our counter. Oops. It's not, I'm not the best drawer for some reason here. <laughs> okay, so here's your counter and files. Okay, so to have the space in between, 30 inches is what is required. That's the minimum. I'll go down a couple inches or go up a couple inches, depending upon the person, you know, how comfortable they feel in that space. But just do that. What I like to do is set up a couple items that are within that reach and see if they can move and be comfortable in that area. You're gonna be working all day. Make sure you have the leg space that's needed. But this is a good starting point, this 30 inches right here, to get you going on that. 
Okay, and that's where, like I said, if you start to space plan, you know, your whole area, your work area, this is how you do it, you know, by setting up the drawer sizes of files and then your, your uh, width that's needed for your leg room. Now, you could have a double desk system where you put another one here and this could be the shared drawer. You can each have a utility drawer and a file and then on the other end have the 30 inch space and then another file on the right. That gets you a nice layout for two rooms or two people in a, in a room and nice space for them to work with with some uh, plenty of storage room. Okay, so that is the width in between the desk. And like I said, that is so important because if you don't want to be cramped or have it too far and then you're reaching way out here and way out here to get to those drawers, try to keep everything within the distance so you easily can get to it and maneuver around. So what I like to do is Cabinets are usually 24 inches deep, front to back. And remember, I try to say this to you because this is always the best yield on material. All right, most material comes in four by eight sheets, 24 inch, we cut it down the middle, and then we cut it in the heights that are needed, but at least out of that 24 down the middle, we get two pieces to work with. Now, if you ask for this to be 30 for some reason, think about that. We just took away the 18 inches and just thrown in the garbage because we can't use it here on the bottom, all right? It could be used up on the top. It just depends what you're doing with your office. So just be cost conscious of those kind of things. If you're using a high quality material for your cabinetry in your office, you don't want to waste it, you know, and just uh, spend the money that's not needed. Oh, so I'm sorry, sorry about that. So 24 inches. So what we try to do is make this 25 and 3 eighths, the, the depth of your counter from the wall. So this gives you a little bit of an overhang because your drawer fronts on this 24 are 3 quarter inches deep, so you end up with 24 and 3 quarters plus a little bit more overhang on it. And that's a nice way to do it. And when you're doing countertops, they're usually an inch and a half thick. Unless you're doing like a granite slab, but then they, they also try to get those at an inch and a half thick. They'll put plywood down and cover it with 3 quarter inch thick granite on the top and then paste off the sides, you know, for that look to make it a, a nice a thick look on there. But always do that. You'll be happy with your workspace. Your computer won't be too far back. And you know everything's within reach from you sitting. And that's the key to being comfortable. And some people have put a little footrest down there and will kind of tilt like here's the side view. And we'll put a, a tilted bore like this that connects into this cabinet here. And then they can put their feet up on it. And some people like that. They say feel those, uh, they feel a little more comfortable working that way. Okay, now on other cabinetry throughout the rooms, it's up to you what's needed and what kind of storage you want to do in the room here in the home in your home office. Some people like to have a wardrobe system possibly on another wall that they can store clothes in excess from di you know different rooms, or they just have so much office you know, items that they need for their job and they want the storage necessary for it. Um, try to always go for those type of cabinetry. Try to go 14 to 16 inches in depth. And the reason I say that is if, unless you're storing files long ways, you don't want to make these cabinets on different walls for storage too big. Because then if you're using little items, it's hard to get back to them all. So remember, 14, 16 inches is, is adequate because it keeps everything closer to you and you, you're able to see it, not a 24 inch deep cabinet where you're looking in and you're wondering what you have back there. So 14 to 16 on storage cabinetry elsewhere in the home office that you decide to do. Okay, upper cabinets. Okay, now what I wanna do is show you. All right, so here's your desk and you want to keep 24 inches of space in today's world before you start your next set of cabinetry, okay? So you want to make sure that you can get your computer, which are larger screens today. Everybody's going to bigger and you know, better looking screens with HD and that you want to be able to get that in there and be able to push it back if needed so you have work area in front of you so you can push your uh, all-in-one towards the back 
and be able to work in front there because you don't want to have to work off to the side because you've got cabinetry there and you can't get your legs in to work comfortable. So sometimes it's good to move it and push it back and get it out of the way. Okay, on upper cabinets, we always like to go 14 to 16 deep on uppers. Now, reason being is, if you notice your kitchen cabinetry is always 12 inches, they did that in the older days so they can get better yield on the material, 12, 12, 12, 12, for a 48 inch, they get four pieces out of it. For this, to me, it's worth the extra money. You're not throwing away much scrap after doing it this way, but think about the better items that you can use that storage for. You know, you could barely get your plates in a 12 inch and your books now with binders or whatever else you want to put up there, 14 to 16 deep. Don't go less than that. The other nice thing about upper cabinet is, let's just do it like this. And we got some shelves in the middle, some doors. Okay. And then you can put some crown to the ceiling if that's what you choose to do or a foot down. That's a personal look. I always like to go to the ceiling because why have a dusty area up top? You constantly have dust up there. And why fight it? Why not just have it like this and you just wipe down the front of the doors? But if you put glass doors in here and LED lights down on the bottom and LED lights up top in these cabinets, make sure you go with glass shelving so the light shines through. Do not put solid wood and close the doors and now you get a light up here and it's only uh, shining on this upper part. It doesn't look good when you step away and LED lighting is very expensive. Now I like to go with puck lights up here for LED lights. Down below I like to go with the strip lighting. It gives you an even flow of light. Try to go cool white because it makes your paper and everything pop more because of the cool white light, a yellow light or a warm light, it kind of makes everything look a little orangey and dingy kind of and so sometimes it's difficult to find things. So go with a full strip light, gives you a perfect shower of light over that entire area that you're working. Why puck lights give you more of a sectional view, okay? That's important. You spend a lot of money on LED lights, do it right. Do it good for your work area. Do this right for highlighting items, okay? And you, you'll love it. LED lighting is a great way to work. You don't have a light on your desk that you're constantly fudging with and it only lights a certain area. Spend the extra money on that bottom cabinet. Make sure you have the, the shower of light that comes down and just in, enlightens that whole area to make it work better for you. Because the whole idea is to be comfortable at this. It's so important because you'll get home is already distractions that could happen easily. Oh, I need to take out the garbage or, oh, here comes a guy ringing a doorbell to mow or whatever you have going on. So when you are working, try to stay focused, try to stay comfortable. That's the key to this, okay, into your home office. One other thing I want to touch base on is when you do the two cabinets like this and you're sitting under it, the center drawer, if you want a pencil drawer, Try to go, you know, no more than two to three inches. Don't go with the bigger drawer. You don't want this thing hitting your knees and it's tough to open up in that. They make pencil drawers that are very tight to the area, like a keyboard tray. And so if you want a keyboard tray, you know, you could put it there. A lot of computers or laptops already have them on there, so that may not be necessary. So put a pencil tray, but try not to go more than two to three inches down because you, this area is already tight as it is. You want to be comfortable there, and that's another key important thing to worry about on that. And I believe it covered all aspects of a home office on what you need to look for. The rest are personal touches um, for yourself, and you'll like the way the system lays out when you know what you're getting into. So make sure you know what you're getting into. And this is a great way to do it by knowing all your key measurements. At Conquering Clutter, we always end every video with organization isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. Clear mind, open heart, happiness. I'm telling you, when you're working in a home office, like I said, touching base on those distractions, you want to be able to work and work efficiently. And there's no other way to do it unless you're organized. You know it at your office at work, 
anywhere you're working, if your tools are all over, how could you work? It's impossible to get the job done properly. This is the way to do it. Like us, subscribe to us. We always here to answer any questions, okay? Have a great day from the folks at Conklin Clutter. See you soon with our next video.